guys, welcome back to the program. Today, I'm going to address another frequently asked question that I get. And essentially today, we're going to be talking about COM ports, specifically which COM port do you use to connect your quad uh, to get Betaflight going. Uh, but we're also going to get into a little bit more of the details of a COM port, what it is, and kind of how they work a little bit. So hopefully, after today's video, you're going to have a much better understanding of what a COM port is and generally how it works. COM port is short for communication port. It's a hardware interface that was very common on computers in, oh, the 90s. A lot of these machines had a port that's similar to this, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen that, and that is literally a hardware serial port that was built into your computer. Nowadays, we've replaced that hardware with things like USB connectors because it's simpler to use, the cables are smaller, and the devices themselves are much more efficient to operate uh, on all different types of levels. However, that doesn't mean that we've completely given up on that older technology, the communication port or the serial port. We've just simply found ways to repurpose it and integrate it into newer devices. And that's exactly what we're dealing with in our quadcopters, that's what our flight controllers are using. Essentially, they're using a virtual version of a standard communication port. And the way that they're achieving that virtual communication is through, well, an adapter that's literally built right into the flight controller. This is a USB to RS-232 or serial adapter. Remember we talked about that port on the back of your computer? And this is kind of literally what is built in your quadcopter in order to adapt the communication to something that we can use. There's lots of other types of adapters that are out on the market that you might use for this sport, uh, but right now we're talking more of the real hardcore serial version where other guys you might use for programming and stuff, but these are still the same type of device where they might be translating a USB to a serial type protocol. I'm also going to link to the Wikipedia page describing COM ports. So if you guys are looking for a little bit more information, uh, something more than I can include in my ramblings, I'll have that link in the description and you guys can check out that article. But without further ado, let's roll up our sleeves and let's figure out, well, how do we find our COM port? How, how do we know what COM port to connect when we plug our quad into the computer? So let's get this thing out of the way. I've got a trusty Martian 2, an old school build, this has got a DYS F4 flight controller in it, one of the original versions, but it's still gonna work great for today's video. All right, enough rambling for me. Let's jump over to the computer and take a look at a couple of things. To begin with, if we're completely unsure of what we're looking for, one of the first things that we're gonna need to do is open Device Manager. Device Manager is a rather powerful tool inside of Windows that helps you install software for all your different hardware devices, but it's also gonna give us some valuable information as to what is going on with your hardware devices in your computer. So let's figure out how we find Device Manager. Well, one thing that we can do is anywhere that we see this My Computer icon, if you right click on this, you're gonna get this menu. I mean anywhere, anywhere where you see this PC or computer or, or any of that, I found a newer version of Windows, specifically Windows 10, opening Windows Explorer like this and finding the computer icon this way is a little bit easier, uh, but otherwise you could always use the search function in the computer and just simply type in Device Manager. But for right now, because I'm able to find this in Windows Explorer super easy, again, I'm right clicking on the My Computer or Computer icon or this PC or whatever it says right click on that and just simply say manage. After you do that, you'll be presented by this computer management window. Now, if you searched and you typed in device manager, you're not gonna get this whole entire window. You're gonna get taken directly to device manager. But because I used the manage PC option, I get a utility with a few more tools in it. And that's okay, we don't need all of this. All I'm looking for is device manager, which you can see is right here towards the bottom. I'm gonna click on device manager. 
I'm going to get presented with this menu in the middle, and this is pretty much what I'm looking for. As I get towards the bottom of my list, I'm going to be presented with this guy, Ports, Com, and LPT. And these are all the active ports that are currently set up and configured on your computer. I'm going to hit this arrow to the left, and I'm going to expand this menu item. Now you can see we have a little bit more information in here. Now I do need to mention that before you do any of this, and I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, it is very important to make sure that you have all the proper drivers installed for Betaflight. I've done multiple videos on installing drivers for Betaflight. There is a video that's part of this series, so if you haven't done that step yet, you need to do this. You need to install your drivers first. Go back, figure out how to get your drivers in, and then come back here, and then we will have success. But anyway, let's keep looking at this. So now that I have my COM ports window opened here, we can see there's a few items in here out of the gate. Uh, and let's just go through them one at a time. I'll kind of explain to you what they are, uh, and hopefully this will give you a better understanding as to what's happening on your computer so you can find the ports that you're looking for on yours. Now, I do not have the flight controller currently plugged in, and that's on purpose. But let's look at these and, and then we'll plug it in. So my first port here is a 3D printer, it's a Rambo, COM6. Well, I know that's this ginormous 3D printer that's sitting behind me, and that guy's pretty much always plugged in, and I know from experience that that's COM6, that's how it always is, and I'm not unplugging it, so it's gonna stay there, but because I haven't plugged in the quad yet, I definitely know that COM6 can't be the quad because the quad isn't connected. And essentially, I'm going to use that process of elimination to figure out what port I'm actually using. And as we go through, we'll see we have communication port COM1. COM ports 1 and 2 are typically reserved for the system. On most modern computers, you're usually not going to be using these. It doesn't mean that you're not going to 100%, but to have a flight controller to appear to be available on COM port 1 or 2, is going to be a very rare thing, and mostly I would dismiss this. Um, but again, that's why we're doing process of elimination, but I really wouldn't expect to see a flight controller on COM port one or two. Uh, then we have a printer port, LPT1. This is that old school, big fat printer port. You're really not gonna use this anymore for anything. Most modern computers aren't gonna have this connection but there might be some instances that you still see it, that's why I'm mentioning it. Then as we go down, we can see I have another device that's connected here. Uh, this is on COM3. I'm not 100% what this is. This is definitely something that I have connected. Uh, but I forget the device. I have 100 things connected to this computer. But whatever, I'm still not worried about it because I'm going to show you right now how we're going to figure out the right COM port number. All right, I've got my Martian, I've got my USB cable, I'm gonna plug it in, and I'm gonna keep an eye on my window with Device Manager so I can see what COM port is going to pop in there. We're gonna try to do this at the same time. I'm gonna plug this in, but I'm gonna show you the screen so you can literally see this COM port pop in there in real time. You can see the menu refreshed, and boom, USB serial communication class, COM14. There you go, that's the answer. I plug in the flight controller, I have a new COM port that becomes available within my men menu. That's it, that's my COM port. Now I know, COM port 14. We're done, we can now connect through Betaflight. Let's close this window. Now that I have my Betaflight window forward, you can see that I have COM port 14. And at this moment, if I were to click on connect, the flight controller would connect no problem. I do wanna talk a little bit more about this though before we just go ahead and click on that connect button. If I hit the drop down, you're gonna see that I have all these other COM ports available in here that were available when we were looking at them inside of Device Manager. That's okay. Well, what if I still don't know what port to connect to? Well, at this moment, we could 
unplug the quad, we can plug it back in, and we can see what COM port pops up and then now becomes available. Uh, don't worry about the numbers if they start getting high. If this is the first quad that you've connected, chances are you're going to have a lower number, maybe three, four, five, six, something like that. But as you continue to grow and work within the sport, and you keep connecting flight controllers to your computer, that COM port number is just gonna continue to get higher and higher and higher and higher. I wanna say that I have some KISS quads that are up in the 40s somewhere, like 46, 48. So don't be scared as you get new quads when that number starts climbing. This is a very normal thing. But anyway, back to identifying your COM port within Betaflight itself. Again, I've got all the ports that are available here. I can do the same thing, I can unplug. You can see COM port 14 goes away. If I plug the quad back in, COM port 14 is gonna pop back in there. And because I've connected this quad to this computer before, it's automatically gonna wanna grab the correct COM port for me. And in most cases, once you've connected the quad, you're gonna see that Betaflight is gonna select the correct COM, and then all you have to do is hit connect and you'll connect. But whatever, back to we've got Betaflight open and we still don't know. So I've got a couple of ports here, uh, geez, I'm not sure which could be the right COM port. Uh, I think it's COM port 3. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to hit connect. I know this is the wrong COM port, but what's going to happen if I try to connect to it? The answer is nothing. Worst case scenario, if you try to connect to the wrong COM port, as you see here in Betaflight, it's just simply going to time out. It's going to tell you that the connection failed and that's it. You're done. Maybe try a different COM port. So we tried three and three didn't work. Let's try six. Six is a 3D printer. So that board's very similar to a flight controller. Let's see what happens. So we click and we're waiting. It's trying to open. And what do you know, after 10 seconds, that COM port also failed. Why? Because there's no flight controller connected to it. Okay, fair enough. Let's pick our right COM port, COM port number 14. Remember how we figured that one out. And I'm going to say connect. And boom, it connects right up, except for one catch. And this is my fault. Um, I have Butterflight installed in this quad still. I should update this to Betaflight. Maybe that'll be today's project. Uh, so that's this particular area here. But I, this is my fault, but I promise if you do have a current version of Betaflight installed uh, and you go through this, you will connect up absolutely no problem. You know what? I'm going to grab one other quad. We're going to do this one more time so I can show you a better example. I'll be right back. Okay, I returned with my TBS Source 1. Let's try to connect this one up. The reason I didn't start with this is because this thing is really noisy. It's very beepy. It's got one of those speedy B battery beepers in it, and it just likes to make a ruckus. It's not great for these types of examples. But whatever. Let's plug it in and find a COM port. I've plugged the quad in, and again, it's populated with COM port 14. And the reason it's done this is because it's actually the same exact flight controller that was in the previous quad. They both have the same version of the DYS flight controller. So again, this is another good example that if you have a fleet, two, three, nine quads, and they all have the same flight controller in it, it's very possible that they're all going to utilize the same COM port. It's only when you're getting into different flight controllers, even if they're from the same brand, different flight controllers can have... These numbers can be all over the place. Really, I guess it's not important what the number is. What's important is that you know which port to use when you're connecting the quad. But anyway, source one has stopped beeping. We've got COM port available. 
Let's hit that connect and you can see now we're into beta flight just as I had promised because this quad is running beta flight and not butterfly. All right guys, so there you have it. Hopefully today's video is gonna make it a little bit easier for you to identify the proper COM port. Hopefully I've done an okay job of that, <laughs> but probably not. Well, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.